In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, today our Orthodox Church celebrates the big, one of the biggest feasts after the resurrection and ascension of Christ is the Holy Pentecost. When after 50 days after Easter and 10 days after the ascension, the Holy Spirit came down as Jesus had promised to his disciples, wait in Jerusalem till you will receive the Comforter, even the Spirit of Truth. And as we heard from the Apostle, from the Acts, Acts of the Apostle, how this took place, it was a, they heard a severe noise like a heavy wind, like a tornado. And after this and all the people in Jerusalem, they were troubled. What is this noise? And after this, the Holy Spirit took form of fiery tongues and stood upon the heads of each one of the apostles. So we saw Jesus after the resurrection breathing upon the disciples saying, receive the Holy Spirit, establishing, establishing the the mystery of repentance, of confession. But here, the Holy Spirit comes in a completely different way. During his baptism, took a form of a dove. But here, to make sure that the people are aware of it, it was this big noise. And appeared as fiery tongues for them to make sure that this is true because we already were facing this group of Pharisees as we heard in the gospel while Jesus still was alive and went to Pentecost and when he was teaching to them that if there is anyone thirsty among you come to me and I'll give you drink so he was talking about the Holy Spirit. His discussion with the Samaritan woman about the living water and those that who will drink will never thirst and out of their heart there will be springs of living water. So, and now we are seeing the disciples receiving the Holy Spirit and out of their, their mouth, we are seeing these rivers coming abundantly. And on their first sermon, 3,000 people were baptized. Right away, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the result was pretty obvious. And, he, and here again we have the people were divided. Some of them, when they heard them speaking in different languages, this was like nine in the morning. They said, oh, they are drunk. Who in the world can be drunk nine in the morning, right? And if you, you're drunk, you will speak probably nonsense. But they were speaking to each one according to his language, and not only, but to each dialect clear it's not like the the Pentecostals in our days they are speaking whoever knows that what they are doing there and they saying that they are speaking in tongues if you speak in tongue speak in one clear right speak to the people to understand this is what the Apostles did they were speaking to each one in his native language as we are using 
during the liturgy to switch some languages here, right? And I think each one of you understands me when I'm talking in your language, right? So, but the Pentecostals, they have no idea what they're saying. It's a bumbling, whatever. So that's not speaking in tongues. That's something else. So we have to be clear. When God speaks to us, he speaks to us clearly so that we can understand the message. But unfortunately, we see as the people was divided back then and some, some of the Pharisees was criticizing Jesus Christ. Even they accused him doing these miracles with the power of the evil one. Others were saying, no, he's a prophet. Others would say that he's Messiah. So different, different opinions in, in the same religion. But the, the Pharisees themselves, what they were saying? They were saying that, oh, no one believes in him except these uneducated people. So pay attention here. Isn't it the same thing that occurred in our days with this ecumenical movement? That the theologians, bishops and priests, they said, oh, they don't understand because they, they are not, they, have, they don't have theological education, right? But those, those people, the, that people from Judea, 2,000 years ago, they weren't educated, but they accepted him. But those that were educated had the law, they knew the prophecies, they knew everything, they denied him. So do you see, pretty much, we are living the same exactly thing. It's like repeating the history again. Those that know and have the law in their hands, they are rejecting the truth. They are rejecting Christ again and again and again. So, but we have to be part of that group that accepted him, accepted him and his teaching, accepted his grace. And as of the saying, each one of us, we are called, each one of us were baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity. Each one of us, through baptism, we received the Holy Spirit, the grace of God the grace of God. So then, if we have received the Holy Spirit, then we have to bring forth fruits. The, the ones that are expected from us as to those that he entrusted his vineyard. So he entrusted his vineyard to us, to each one of us. To one maybe more, to another less but we're still responsible for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We cannot put them on the shelf and wait to see what is going to happen. We know what is going to happen. He said, each branch that does not bring forth fruit will be cut out and thrown in the oven and be burned. So, which means the oven is the abyss which is eternal fire. So we have to be careful because each word, each word of his has a meaning, a deeper meaning. He was, wasn't talking about the branches from the tree. He was talking about our souls because we know that he is the vine and we are the branches, right? He made it clear. So, and as his branches, we have to bring forth fruits and as as we know the the gardener if there are branches that are not bringing fruit he's cutting them 
right? Because by cutting those, you clean the tree and the tree becomes more powerful and absorbs more and brings more, right? So the same thing God, he will cut off all those that are not bringing fruits, are holding down the, the other branches and not letting them to bring fruit. How many of today's Orthodox fellows are becoming a, bar a barrier for others? There is, there is so many. So it, even in, in the same family, couple, all like, the husband will say, oh, I'm so done with you. You're all about God, church, and priest, and I'm so tired of it, right? So see, right there we see the barrier that divides us from God. And this is so many cases. Either husband or wife. They may be the husband that loves God more than anything else. Or maybe the wife. And there is a division among them. As it was among the teachers of the Old Testament. And as is among the new theologians. Once are those that are striving for ecumenism. And others are those that are striving for the holy tradition. For the right thing. And there is a division among them. Right? So you see it's not only in the church. It's not only in the family. Or any, any, it's, it's general. It, it's like a virus. That tries to divide people. And tries to rip them from God. This is pretty much what is happening. But we have to to see through this darkness, to see the light that Jesus gave us through the Holy Spirit. Because these are the fruits of the Holy Spirit as we saw in today's gospel. As soon they received the Holy Spirit, they started speaking in different languages. And after that, that was the first sign of the Holy Spirit. But after that, even the shadow were healing people. They would pass by and the shadow will, will touch dead people and they will come to life. Or seek lame, lame, paralyzed, blind, whatever. And they will come, they will be healed. Right? So, you see the greatness of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit works through us is the comforter the spirit of truth but you see the spirit of evil and lie of this world is trying to blind us spiritually not to see the fruits of the Holy Spirit and uh, unfortunately the leaders the ecclesiastical, the religious leaders of our modern world are not an exception. Even though we all receive the same Holy Spirit, and from the beginning of the church, of church, Arius, he was one of the Orthodox priests, but he was blinded by by the the devil, by his ego, and he was teaching perversely. And so many throughout the ages and throughout the years. So we ha we're not excused in our time of those individuals that are blinded by the evil forces and by their own ego. But again, my dear ones, we are responsible today to keep the word of truth and to spread it out. It's not only us as priests and bishops and clergy in, in general, but each one that has been baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity. Because in, on, on, on the day we are received through the baptism, we are becoming his soldiers. So what a soldier does 
Exactly. The soldier has the duty to take care, to protect the general, to protect the emperor, <coughs> president, wherever his country ultimately, right? So this is what we do, my dear ones. We protect the truth of our God. We protect his words. We protect his church. And we protect each other. We're having each other's back. This is what we do as Jesus' soldiers. And we have to always remember that. That we're not just John, Maria, and we are his soldiers. Right? So, and the weapon is, this is, the Holy Cross is the weapon. The ultimate weapon that scares away the demons. Of course, with fasting and prayer so when we we are taking these weapons and we are taking it, it seriously then nothing can disturb us but even the Holy Spirit is fighting on our behalf because as human beings yes we are weak but Remember that he said, do not think what you're going, going to say or answer because the Holy Spirit will speak on your behalf. And this is what is happening, my dear ones. Let the Holy Spirit lead us and let the Holy Spirit do the, the job for us. We just have to be strong in our faith. That's the only requirement and to follow. To follow. That's all. So let us follow the commandments of our Lord. Receiving the Holy Spirit, let us, let, let these fruits, these results of the Holy Spirit be spread through, through us, throughout the world. And let us glorify the eternal God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you.